Today is the fifth day of the November 86 retreat. I'll mention several questions that have been brought up. One person said, it seems to be easier or happen more frequently now in sitting that the mind is fairly clear. Not meaning, not barrages of thoughts all the time. But as I get up and walk, it seems so much more difficult to keep that state of mind. Maybe before getting into the other questions, we'll just look at this one. In sitting still, motionlessly, a quiet environment, a person says thoughts slow down, and there's also some possibility of watching what's going on in the mind, seeing what's happening. But in getting up, starting to walk, that state of mind seems to be lost or so, so difficult to maintain. Again, I don't think I said at the beginning, I cannot quote something somebody said verbatim because I don't remember it. And it's not important. What is important is that we have something that concerns all of us to look at together. That may concern us, it may not concern us, then this is not said, you should be concerned with this. And the mind does that so quickly. It's interesting to watch. Something is said and the mind extrapolates, I should be doing that. Or what she says, I shouldn't be doing that. That's not what is being said. We're just looking at something. Is it that in moving around, walking, that in itself, the activity, the motion of the body in itself is, for whatever reason, habitually linked with changing thoughts, with a mind filling with thoughts. Or is it that one is trying to hold on to something that was? State of mind, fairly empty mind, ability to observe, and that state one wants to preserve. And now the bell rings and one gets up and how am, I going to, how am I going to preserve that? It's already gone at the moment that thought comes up. That's thought and wanting. And the idea of maintenance, the attachment to the state, and the reaction to its disappearance. Is that what fills the mind as one is walking? How can I bring that back? How was it? What did I do? How could I do this now while I'm walking? These are all thoughts which fill the mind. And then the reaction, my mind is filled 
with thoughts. It's also a thought. Is that what is going on? Or is it that getting up from a place where there's no motion, no movement, what is to be seen one has looked at for three, four days now. There's nothing new there. <laughs> but getting up, there are always some new socks. <laughs> <laughs> some new pant legs or one may not have one's gaze lowered that much there are new people new faces to look at <laughs> <laughs> who are they? why did they come in late? why don't they come to the whole retreat? <laughs> new sights as one walks around, not this square brown mat, with this, two knees. And what does the mind do when it sees new things, when new things are seen and heard? Does it immediately want to know what this is? The scanner of the brain computer seeking for a name. Sometimes it doesn't take any time, there it is. It's a new person, one doesn't have to scan, but who that person is, one may have to think for a moment. Naming floor, rug, dining room, window, all of it is that all of is all of that being named because that is the ancient, inherited, conditioned function of the brain to know, to make us safe, to tell us what something is, to remember that it is not dangerous or that it is worthwhile examining, looking into. See what all can be observed in walking while this brain now is busy doing its thing in the, in the face of the changing sights and sounds. And feelings, getting up is a different feeling from sitting. The whole body feeling changes. Certain pains disappear and there's the feeling of the feet on the floor. Not just feet, there's different parts of the feet. Is one naming them or just feeling. There's my heel, there's the balls, there's the toes. One can, it can happen, I do not say don't name it, but is one aware that what is actually happening is being named, which is thought. And if there is awareness that the word foot, heel, toe is not what's actually there, then can one listen and attend again what it is, this walking, which one may not even call walking, just a, a curious openness to what is happening. The feelings, physical feelings of legs moving, the arms, maybe there's a, there's a pain or in the, in the shoulder, neck, can one feel that? without naming it, knowing it. The, the, the varying shades of yellow, brown, the spots, does one know them or can one see them? Not see them, see, be aware. The, the smooth 
feeling of the boards, the, the colors, the lines, the little peg, pegs, whatever. I don't know the name. And certain cracking of the, of the boards in certain areas. Will one anticipate it? Or when one hears it, say, oh, this is the board that always cracks. If it happens, can one be aware that at that moment thought is occupying the mind and there is no listening and attending to the sound of the squeaking board? Different changes of light as one walks by the window, then into a dark, dark room, piece of rug there, window, some fresh air hitting the face. This is all being verbalized right now. Does one verbalize it to oneself? Not you shouldn't, but can one see that the word fresh air is not what's happening? That's something entirely different from the word. Taking a, a deep breath is not the word taking a deep breath. That's just the description, but actually the taking of a deep, deep breath could never be completely described in words. It's What is it when I have no words for it? So, rather than trying to hold on to a quiet state of mind, or to whatever state of mind there was on the mat, why hold on to anything rather than seeing listening, feeling, what's happening? And how it is happening? Another question was, She said, I'm kind of confused. There's been a lot of talk about problems in relationship, questioning, looking into it, finding, finding out about it. But as I'm sitting down, says this person, I don't really have a problem. I don't have a question. I'm confused. What am I supposed to do? Should I dredge up a problem? Should I have a question? Is, uh, I'm going on, I'm at living. Is something wrong with me? Because that's what confusion means. Confusion, I think we always say we're confused when we think what is shouldn't be, something else should be in its stead. And yet it isn't so. What's right now? What is or what should be? I'm confused. Is that what confusion is? As one sits down, there is no problem. How marvelous. No, no burning question. What's the problem? What is the problem? Is the problem that one thinks one should do what has been talked about? At a loss of how to do it because it's not there. Can one sit down 
simply, openly to what is there. The first thing is the confusion. Allow that to be there, letting it show itself for what it is. The thoughts, I should be doing this, I'm not doing that, what should I do? Let the confusion reveal itself through its conflicting trains of thought and see that clearly. What's going on? The thoughts. Not what should be going on, but what is going on. It's simple, but we are used to live complicated because of our ideas of what we should be doing and what we should not be doing, which bar, block out the actuality of what is happening. Sitting down, is there an openness to listen, look, attend, to whatever's there, sounds, sensations, without labeling them. If a label comes up, can that be seen? If not, the label is important in our reaction to it. I like this, I don't like it, I shouldn't have it. becomes the paramount thing in the mind and the sound is not heard anymore. Can that be realized for oneself? <coughs> Sometimes people say, well, what should I do with what I hear or see? Is that also a, an ancient, conditioned attitude that I should be doing something with what is there. Has one ever sat quietly and really done nothing with what's there, done absolutely nothing. And yet, well aware with what's there, well aware of the reactions that come up, and yet not doing. So we come to another question, which is, what actually is this attention, this awareness that you speak about so much? You speak about awareness, you speak about attention, you speak about listening, you speak about seeing, not knowing, questioning what is all that. I don't really know what you're talking about. I'm not so sure I'm ever really aware. I'm not so sure I'm ever really listening or seeing or questioning. What does it mean to be aware? We already mentioned in, in walking around, getting up from the mat 
the sensations, the stiff knee or a, a, maybe the, the ankle is, has no feeling in it, is asleep, and then one sort of limps along or maybe one is in good condition and yet uh, new sensations. The looks, the, the, the sight of the floor, the sound of the board, What is, what is awareness, listening or seeing? These, these, I think, are all used interchangeably just because some words are, are more accessible at certain times to certain people than others. And yet the word listening, the word seeing, or the word awareness is not the actual process of awareness or listening. sitting right now, the different sounds of the, the clicks of, in the radiator, the, the wind. Can one listen without the word? I used words so that we are, are in communication with each other. But the word wind, or the word rustling of clothes, or movement of, 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 of legs, the, the, these words are not the actual sounds. Listen. Is it possible to hear? To hear that? Without any descriptive words in the mind? Just to, stop, to listen to the sound? Or does the, the brain sooner or later furnish the word, the description? Or immediately? Or is there already thought in the mind and no possibility of listening? One is so occupied with thoughts, one hasn't listened. One, one is thinking about whatever. This is not a word. This is not a thought, is it? Is that clear? This is not a thought. To say hands rubbing on, on cloth, on legs, these are words, these are descriptions. And the description is not this, this is not a description, this is not a thought. This feeling here is not a thought, it's this. The, the pure perception of that, without the word, without the description, Is that awareness? That's what we're using the word for. But the word awareness is not the listening, the feeling, the seeing, without the word. And usually the way our perceptions 
run the course that they run is there's not just word. Let's say when one is sitting quietly. Right now it's a round of sitting. A timed round of sitting. And next to one, this is going on. What goes on in the mind? The, just the, the listening, the sound of it, the awareness of the sound? Or is one trying to figure out what is this person doing? And why is he doing it? And an annoyance very likely coming with it of doing this in a room in which one is supposed to be quiet. Anger, resentment, reaction. We can put it under that heading. It's not just the naming of the sound, but also trying to figure out a reason and a reaction to it. With which the sound itself is no longer heard. What is heard now, or what the mind and body are occupied with, are words and reactions, emotional reactions. And where is the awareness? At this instant. It's not there. When we become emotionally involved in the reaction to a sound or a sight, there's no awareness. The, the thing itself that has triggered the word, the reaction, the emotion, that thing is no longer seen for, for what it is. When the, the, the mind and body are infused with process of what we just described. listening to this wind? Is there a reaction? Associations? Images? One could see in one's mind the trees swaying. One doesn't have to look. One can imagine that. But the imagination of the trees swinging in the, in the wind is not what is going on. And it is a, a step away from pure listening. There may be some feelings of anxiety, uh, sort of not very clear, murky feelings of anxiety when one hears wind. Maybe there has been an experience of, with tornadoes has been hurt by wind and these feelings are triggered. Can, can they come into awareness as they are triggered, just as the wind? Feeling that without any resistance, no meaning, no reaction against it or for it. Just everything that happens opening up to to being heard, seen, felt. People, people tell me Sometimes I, I don't really know whether I'm aware of something or I'm, th I'm thinking about it. Yeah. In, in sitting, there, is, there are lots of thoughts and fantasies going on. But 
how can one even report about that this is so without there having been awareness that this is going on? If there was no awareness of it, one would not report about it, one would live in these fantasies and thoughts. So, to, to be able even to report that there have been fantasies and thoughts, there has to be an instant of awareness. And at that moment, the thought and fantasy is interrupted. question often comes up, a person says, well, what should I do at that moment? A question that is asked here is not, what should I do, but what am I doing? What is going on at that moment? ask this question, and I'm interested to find out what happens at a moment when thought is interrupted, when there's awareness that thinking has been going on. What happens? If I really want to find out, then maybe the next time there's awareness, I will look. Because if I think, what should I be doing now? Then <laughs> I'm thinking again. It's just one train of thought has stopped, and another train is taking off in a different direction. So, at this moment of, of listening, of, of, of awareness, what, what is going on? Does the, the thought come up, what should I do? Can that be seen and heard immediately as it comes up? So it doesn't run the show? Because with that thought, what should I be doing? You know what goes, rummaging. Like, should, should I be doing this? I'm confused. I should be doing that. Maybe I should have a practice after all. When I had a practice, then I always knew what to do. These thoughts are all there. And no awareness when they hold the field. So at, at the moment of being aware, what is going on? Is one interested? When, when we talk like this in a meeting, a person will ask often, well, should I be aware of the sensations? Or should I be aware of the breathing? You see how much we are oriented to asking somebody what we should do. And the question is so limited, and the expected answer is also limited. Breathing is going on, whether we're dreaming, sleeping, or even fainting, we're still breathing. And sensations are there all the time. But if I think I should attend to the breathing, then whatever awareness there is, is taking place on a very narrow stage. The, the stage being set by the intention to listen to the breathing. And if I intend to listen to the breathing, then I must not listen to anything else. Because anything else may take the mind away from being with the breathing. So the intention to do something specific brings about fences. 
walls, blocks, resistances to whatever dis disturbs that intention. Do you see that? Whereas, if there is an open, wondering, questioning, what, what, what is happening at this moment? I was thinking, I was lost in, in, in my thoughts of uh, the warm beach in Florida. And here I am. One, one, is, one is coming to, one is not in Florida. It seemed so real. <laughs> What's here? I don't know yet. I, I, I don't know. I have to find out. I have to look and listen. I was completely lost someplace else. And to, to listen with, with an open curiosity, not a program, not an agenda. This, this, this is all worthwhile listening to. So how, how can the awareness have that, be that open? Not fenced in through intention, through practice, through, through agenda, what one should listen to. I don't know. I don't know the answer. How it? can be that way. Either it is that way or it isn't. But when it isn't this way, wh what is in the way? Can one wonder and look? Is one, in fact, preoccupied with a goal, trying to get that quiet mind back from yesterday? That's thinking, remembering, anticipating, and the emotions that go with it. It can be seen at a glance. Am I bored? Is there this, this feeling or state of body, mind, being that we call boredom? Usually if we arrive at that description, at that definition, we already don't want to look. Boredom means something, Ugh. I want something different. But having named the state as boredom, can one lift, lift the word, like one lifts a cover, and really wonder what this state is? Hear it, feel it, listen to it, let it, let it show itself. In this unpressured, non-directional attention. One may find one feels tremendously dull, numb. Can one lift the cover of these words? dullness, numbness, and see what's really there, what this dullness and numbness really is, how does it feel? Mm. Is there already a resistance against it, which is manifested in tension and in in certain places of the body or all over the body. The resistance of dislike. And if indeed tension throughout the body is detected, one can, one can feel it. Does one have to tense and brace against whatever one is bracing against? Does one have to? 
One just asks. Why am I doing that? One wonders. And attends to the to the tension, the stress, the the certain flexing of, of muscles. It may be an old habit, but one doesn't have to do it. If one attends to to tensions that are there in the muscles and They may relax, they may not, but they may. And out bubbles a thought very often, and a thought, I must, or I mustn't. Because these thoughts hold the body tense from way back. Tensions in the face, around the mouth. Can one simply be aware? And they may reveal an image. I must be tough, or I'm this, or I'm that. Revealed or manifested in, in tensing muscles in the face, frowning, smiling. It's all open to looking, not interpreting. It has nothing to do with interpretation. It is inquiring and discovering without knowing what will come of it. Nothing may come of it. I don't know. It's there. The tension is there. Can I? Listen to it without resistance. And if there is indeed resistance, what is that? Can, can there be a real Stillness, a still stillness meaning no no taking of a of a stand for something or against something. to be careful with a word like intensely. But there is an intensity to it. The, the intensity that comes when the energy does not go into for or against, when it just gathers in wondering, in listening, in just letting that be, without any separation. question that is asked often, what do you mean by questioning? Do you mean asking a question? Yeah, it's, it is asking a question, what is this? Or, but it is not 
using a question as a practice, it's not repeating a question in any kind of a rhythmical way, coordinated with the breathing or so. This is not what is meant by questioning. Questioning means wondering what everything is or what something is, but then being quiet to listen. One has asked the question, now can one be quiet to listen? So often when we ask questions of someone, Say, oh, it's I wanted to ask you a question. One asks a question, but then one goes on to, to tell what one knows about it. And one does, hasn't really asked the question, one just wants to verify one's knowledge. Or, yeah, show it. But this questioning that we're talking about here is free from the knowledge about what something could be, or what one has known it to be, if it's a pain, emotional pain, physical pain, the two of them go hand in hand, they're not separable. If one asks, what is that? Can one put aside everything one knows about it from the past? How this pain has uh, been there, how it has uh, <coughs> plagued one and, and made one suffer, <coughs> how one anticipates it to continue, that it probably comes from that and it also involves my liver and maybe my spleen, maybe it will get worse. Can one put all the explanations one ever has had, all the descriptions, all the knowledge about it, and the association with past remembrances, put it all away in this question, what is this right now? And not be dominated by the desire to know it, but to know it uh, through words and, 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 and intellectual, intellect, but to, to let it show itself. To allow it to be what it is this moment, without any interference. So the mind is in a state of questioning, not repeating a question, but in a state of not knowing. And therefore open to what is there, a, a state of not knowing which is flexible, not fixed in any anticipation, condition, I'm going to do this for a while and something better reveal itself. It's, it's free of that. It's gentle. It's nonviolent. talked about it in one meeting, it is not coming with crowbars to tackle this, to open it up. And it is a state of no separation, because when there's no one who anticipates what it is, or who remembers and knows what it is, or who wants an answer, when there's just the openness of attending, then there's just what is. There's not two in that. <coughs> not me and my pain. There's just whatever is, and that is not pain. It's, it's not anything. It's what it is. What is it?
And in, in this kind of questioning and inquiry, will one be aware whether one is closing in on something and the mind operating in a very narrow space? Or is there also the sound of the wind and the rustling of clothes and the creaking of a board as some footsteps come across it? And the breathing, the heartbeat, the sensations in, in the knees, in the back, in the shoulder, whatever. Is that all there, not barricaded off, off limits? Nothing off limits. in that state, <clears throat> if, we call, if we want to call it that. One is not looking for something, or looking at something, or listening to something, attending to something or aware of something. But can the listening, the seeing, the looking, the attending, the feeling, the hearing, can that be one undivided whole? Undivided from what is seen, what is heard, what is attended to. Sometimes people tell me, you're getting too idealistic. That's not how it is. If I listen to you say that, then I make an ideal out of this undivided whole. That one, one, one is seeing something, one is observing something that's going on. How one makes an ideal out of something one hears and then the in inherited and conditioned tendency to attain that, to get that. One is observing that. That's incredible, isn't it, that we, that we see that, that this is happening. And that's what this work is about, what, what is happening, not what should happen. What's the mind doing and the body following along with its orchestration of emotions, feelings, tensions?
We will end him for today.